Hey guys, Mr. Jansen here to take you through the uh, 100 illustrated ways to pass the regents. Now we are on numbers 71 through 80, so let's get started. Number 71, isostasy is when Earth's crust is in equilibrium. Okay, so basically, it's when like the crust is in this like gravitational balance ab upon the the mantle. Okay, so in other words, when you put things on top of the crust, it's going to kind of go down. Okay, but when you take things off the crust, it's going to rebound or kind of bounce back up. All right. Um, the most common example is during a um, glacial period. So, in other words, when you put a big, you know, large piece of ice on the crust, it's going to begin to sink down. But then, when that, you know, ice is removed or melted, it's going to bounce back up again. Okay, so it's in a nice equilibrium. Like we're still re rebounding today from the last ice age, you know, the the bedrock uh, underneath Manhattan, Manhattan is still slightly moving back up and recovering since the last ice age. OK, so if this uh, concept were to appear as a region's question, um, it may appear something like this. OK, the isostasy is related to which of the following. OK, and like I said, it's when, you know, you have, you know, force pushing down and force pushing back up. So it's kind of in this dynamic equilibrium. OK, or choice C. OK. Very good. Let's move on to number 72. An unconformity is a buried erosion surface that represents a gap in the rock record. Okay, that's a nice summary for what an unconformity is. Okay, so a buried erosional surface. All right, well, what does that mean? Um, well, it's kind of like when you have um, layers and those layers get pushed up. And once they get pushed up, they then become eroded away and then new layers are kind of put on top of them. So if you're looking at a cross section, you know, it almost looks like a gap in the time record. You have a nice sequence here. Then you have the uplift and erosion that occur right here. And then all of a sudden you'll have some sinking down, uh, maybe even, you know, so uh, it falling beneath sea level. And then you have new layers put on here. So it actually looks like, you know, there's a missing layer. All right. With an unconformity, you want to know three steps, basically. Um, you want to know that uplift, you want to know erosion, and you want to know submergence or subsidence. Those are the three kind of steps in the formation of an unconformity. If you're going to see it as a region's question, it says an unconformity between two sedimentary layers is most likely produced by what? Okay, so once again, the three steps, you know, emergence, erosion, submergence, or uplift, erosion, you know, subsidence. Any one of those is fine, or here we're talking about choice A. Okay, very good. Uh, that's an unconformity. Number 73, the four principal types of drainage patterns are related to underlying uh, regional geology. They are dendritic, rectangular, r radial, and this uh, trails pattern. Okay. Um, so once again, it's almost like with these drainage patterns, you want to think of a bird's eye view. You're in a helicopter and you're looking down on the river. So you want to know what it looks like from a helicopter view. Okay. Because the side view of a mountain is a heck of a lot different than the bird's eye view, especially the drainage pattern. The drainage pattern, it kind of goes out in all directions, kind of like this flat pattern. OK, um, you know, this pattern is a gently sloping hill. It kind of forms almost like a tree. OK, that's where the word dendritic comes from. OK, and then your other patterns here are going to be based upon the hardness of the bedrock, okay, and how the bedrock has been eroded and where the water is going to fit in between and squeeze in between. And once again, always picture it as a bird's eye view, okay? So let's look at it um, as a region's question. The diagram below represents a map view of a stream drainage pattern. Which underlying bedrock structure most likely to produce the stream drainage pattern? So your bird's eye view, okay, you have it kind of a line here, here, and here. Which one of these is it going to fit in? Where's the water going to fit in? Is it going to fit in this one, this one, this one? Um, obviously, I scroll down, but once again, it's going to fit in this pattern here because that's where the water would kind of fit in between. So it's going to be choice four. Okay. Number 74. When a rock is broken into smaller pieces, surface area increases and weathering rate increases. Okay, cool. Once again, if you take a boulder and a whole mess of small, you know, rocks, the small rocks are going to weather a lot faster because the water can get in there. Okay, it can, you know, do frost action, expand, break it down. If you have a big solid rock, the water can't really can't get in there, so it's not going to break it down very fast. All right. So the more surface area you have exposed, the faster the weathering rate. Okay, so the more sides you have exposed, the faster the weathering rate. Um, as a region's question, it says the diagram below represents equal masses of two identical rock samples. Sample A is one large block, while sample B was cut into four smaller blocks of equal size. If subjected, if subjected to the same environmental conditions, sample B will weather more quickly than sample A. The best explanation for this is what? Okay, we're talking about surface area. Okay. 
okay? And the fact that there's more surface area in B than in A or choice B. Cool. Number 75, mineral properties depend upon the eternal atomic arrangement, the eternal arrangement of the atoms. I have my classes repeat this out loud. It's such an important concept, okay? Um, so depending upon how the atoms are stacked in the mineral will determine all its properties, you know what I mean? Um, it's hardness, you know, it's luster, it's cleavage, all, all this stuff, okay? So once again, it, the common example is carbon atoms. If carbon atoms are kind of stacked and spread out, you know what I mean, in either a tetrahedral form or what have you, they're going to form something very hard, okay, like a diamond. But if they're stacked in like sheets and they're kind of just stacked on top of one another, they're going to be something like graphite. And graphite is not very valuable while a diamond can be very valuable, okay? So once again, it's all about how the atoms are arranged. So the internal arrangement of the atoms is going to determine the properties of a mineral, okay? Um, as a region's question, it may appear like this. Um, an arrangement of atoms such as the one shown in the diagram determines the minerals what? Okay, that's how they're stacked. It's going to be, once again, their physical properties. Okay, internal arrangement of the atoms or choice three. Number 76, ocean crust is thin, dense, and basaltic. Okay, so once again, ocean crust is very dense. Okay, so if it's very dense, that means it's squished. So if it's squished, it's thin. All right, and it's made of basalt. All right. Those are the properties of basalt. All right. Uh, in, in, in other words, you know, you almost want to think of the continental crust sitting on top of the oceanic crust. OK, the oceanic crust is more dense, so it's going to sit beneath it. All right. Actually, this concept, it, it, there is a little part of it in the reference tables. OK, so if you pull out your reference tables um, and once again, you go to your pizza pie chart, which I like to call it, um, you're, you know, Right up here in the chart, it's talking about granitic continental crust and basaltic oceanic crust. So it tells you that oceanic crust is basalt, and it tells you the density, 3.0. Okay? So come to your reference tables when you're talking about either uh, you know, continental crust or you know, oceanic crust. All right? um, once again, if we are going to see this as a region's question, it may appear something like this. The observed difference in density between the continental crust and oceanic crust is most likely due to their differences in what? Okay, so once again, what's causing their differences? All right, um, and once again, we're, we're, we're talking about the, composi the composition. We're talking about whether it's granite or whether it's kind of basalt. Okay, um, cool. Seventy-seven, kind of what we were just talking about. Continental crust is thick, less dense, and made of granite. So use the same reference tables whenever you get a, uh, a crust question. All right, and you know, so you don't have to totally memorize this all together. Um, as a region's question, it's going to appear like this. Compared to the continental crust of North America, the oceanic crust uh, around the area of Hawaii is probably what? Okay, so now you're comparing the two, okay? And you're trying to think to yourself, okay, so oceanic crust is more dense and thinner. Continental crust is thicker, okay, and sits up a little higher. But they're talking about the stuff around Hawaiian Islands, so they're talking about stuff that's thinner and a different in composition or choice D, okay? Number 78, sedimentary rocks commonly layered and almost all fossils form in sedimentary environments, okay? So here's a little picture of your reference tables right here, okay? Um, layering is what you want to associate with sedimentary rocks, you know, nice even layers, okay? Um, you know, once again, that's showing the compaction and the compression or cementation when sedimentary rocks form. All right, so you want to understand how sedimentary rocks form. You don't have to memorize that. Once again, okay, that's going to be in your reference tables. Okay, if you go to your rock cycle chart, this is telling you how sedimentary rocks form. Actually, this tells you how all your rocks form. Okay, you know, compaction, cementation, deposition, and burial all lead to the formation of a sedimentary rock. Okay, these processes lead to the formation of a metamorphic rock. These processes lead to the formation of an igneous rock. Okay, so all these processes are going to lead to, you know, um, the different formation of different rocks, and they're all interrelated. That's the whole point of the rock cycle chart. So don't forget to look at that, okay? Um, as a region's question, okay, sedimentary rocks, which type of rock most likely contains fossils? Okay, so you just come to your reference tables, and you kind of see which one is made up of clastic sediments, okay? And you have a list of them right here, all right? And you're going to see, obviously, that it's going to be shale, because shale is right down here in your reference tables. Okay. Number 79, igneous rock, they cool fast, small crystals cool slow, large crystals. Okay. How igneous rocks form, you can use a rock cycle chart again. But if it cools fast, that means it cools very quickly. So the crystals don't really have a time to form. If they're cooling slowly, they're big crystals, and they have plenty of time to form. Okay. So 
deep within the crust, you're going to have larger crystals. Near the surface, you're going to have smaller crystals. Okay, So here's larger crystals by slow cooling and smaller crystals by fast cooling. Okay, um, As the region's question is showing you a picture of pegmatite here, which characteristic provides the best evidence that the pegmatite solidified deep underground? Okay, Another word for big crystals all right, is that coarse texture, or number four, very coarse texture. Number 80, metamorphic, banded, distorted uh, structure. So once again, how metamorphic rocks form? Use your rock cycle chart. Here's your metamorphic rock chart. Great sample here of banding. Okay, if you get this on your lab practical, you're excited because it's very obvious banding going on here. Um, and once again, that's called by, caused by the heat and pressure kind of squishing the layers down, okay? Um, as the region's question, it might appear like this. The diagram below shows some deformed structure of intergrown crystals. The rock was most probably formed by what? Okay, metamorphic rocks, okay, are formed by heat and pressure. Anytime you see the, the, this, this banding right here, you got to think of squeezing and heat and pressure, okay? Great, awesome. That's numbers 71 through 80. Uh, thank you for watching, and stay tuned for our next video, 81 through 90. Thank you.